the Talmud records a fascinating exchange between God and his ministering angels in heaven. The angels confront God. They quote a passage from this week's Torah portion. They say, God, the Torah says about you that you do not play favorites and you do not accept bribes. And yet we see that you favor the Jewish people. How can that be? God defends himself also by quoting a different passage from this week's Torah portion. He says, in the Torah, I commanded the Jews, you should eat and you should be satisfied and you should bless the Lord your God. That passage forms the basis for the commandment that after we eat bread and we're satisfied, we have to say the grace after meals. But God explains that commandment only kicks in if the Jew eats enough bread to be full. And yet the Jews have taken it on themselves that they even recite the grace after meals after eating only a modest portion of bread, the size of an olive or the size of an egg. Shouldn't I show them favor? But think about it. How is that an answer to the angel's question? If God's not supposed to play favorites, what's the difference if there's a reason why he's favoring one people? No favorites means no favorites. So maybe what God is saying to the angels is this. Angels, you're right. I am closer to the Jewish people. But the reason I'm closer to the Jewish people is not because I took a step closer to them. It's because they took a step closer to me. And now maybe we can understand and appreciate some of the depth and the beauty behind the blessing before and after eating. Before we eat, everything in the world belongs to God. So if I want to eat something, I have to ask God for permission. God, may I have permission to eat this piece of bread? And I rededicate myself to God. I'm saying in a sense, God, I'd like permission to eat this bread so that I can renew and replenish my energy so that I'll be better able to continue serving you. And then after I eat that bread, I owe a debt of gratitude that I have to fulfill. God, thank you so much for that delicious meal. And now that I've replenished my store of energy, watch how I'm going to use it to continue to serve you. Those blessings, if said properly, should change us. They should make us more polite. We're saying please more often. They should make us more grateful. We're saying thank you more often. And most importantly, they should make us more aware. More aware that God is the source of all blessings. Consider the blessing that we say before we eat bread. We finish the blessing with the phrase, Hamotzi lechem min haaretz. We're praising God for bringing bread from the ground. One second. Bread doesn't grow from the ground. You can't go bread picking. To make bread, you've got to harvest that weed and then winnow and thresh and sift and bake. All sorts of activities go into making and baking bread. So why do we praise God for bringing bread from the ground? Because we're saying, God, we recognize. Not only did you give us the raw material, you gave us the sun, you gave us the water that we needed for that grain to grow. And then you gave us the ingenuity, the technical and the technological prowess and know-how to be able to convert that grain or that wheat into bread. So in a sense, as far as we're concerned, you brought that bread from the ground. And the more we recognize God as the source of all blessing, the more appropriate it is for him to share more of that blessing with us. So here is the ultimate get rich quick scheme. Try taking a few extra moments before you eat and a few extra moments after you eat, saying the appropriate blessing beforehand, asking God for permission, rededicating yourself to him. And then afterwards, thanking God for giving you everything and telling him, now I'm gonna use that strength to serve you and do it the right way. Not by mumbling it, not through rote, not through just whipping out a blessing, but saying it with a proper intention, saying it, meaning it, thinking about it. And let me know if you don't have a few extra dollars in your wallet soon after.